This is Engineering 431 Foundation Engineering at San Francisco State. I'm just going to let you know that the first quiz is on wall stresses. You should have already taken Engineering 430 and you should be familiar with it. I'm assuming that you know what was taught in that course and so we're going to go forward from that point. But I will do some review just to refresh your memory, but you will be quizzed on it. So first quiz on wall stresses and then I want you to remember how to do find the point of interest and H for what we're going to call type 1 and type 2 foundation. So let's just get going. So this particular problem is to find the active and passive stresses for the wall shown. You can see it's a gravity wall here and we have gravel, clay 1, clay 2, clay 1, clay 2 over here. We have the uh, water table up there on that side, water table there on that side, and we have our soil properties here. If you notice we have what dry unit weight, saturated unit weight, Ka, K0, Kp, and then we have the um, coefficient of friction between clay and concrete. But right now I just want you to find the active and passive stresses. And to refresh your memory, well, uh, we're, gonna, we're going to use uh, the unit weight of concrete is 150 pounds per cubic foot. And then uh, the sliding factor of safety is the sliding resistance divided by the sliding force. And the factor of safety for overturning is the resisting moment divided by the overturning moment. All right, so let's just get you started here. And if you remember, I want to find the stresses on the active side, this is the active zone over here, this is the passive zone over here. I'm not going to review why that is, you should know that by now. And you need to remember that because I have these soil boundaries here that we need to have depths of interest that are just above and just below those soil boundaries. So when I look in the active side, my depths of interest are going to be zero, which is the ground surface, um, four minus four plus. So what is that? That's right in the, in the gravel there and in the clay one just below it. And then we have 12 minus and 12 plus. What is that? That's in the clay one and in the clay two. And then we have 15, which is the base of the wall. That's on the active side. On the passive side, we're over here. So what we have is 7. And then I've got clay 1 and clay 2. So I have 12 minus 12 plus. And then the base of the wall, which is 15. And so what do we, what do, we do? Uh, the way that I recommend you solve these problems again is, well, everything is saturated. You can see everything's saturated, so that makes things a little bit simpler. I'm not going to use any of the dry unit weights, and I will use all of the saturated unit weights, so we, don't, we can cross those off and circle the ones we want. And then, what do we have? We have uh, zero, it's zero. So at four minus, what do I have? I've got four times 111. 444. And then at 4 plus, the sigma v is the same. Well, I'm not going to go through why that is. We went through it in detail last time. At 12 minus, what do I have? I've got 4 gravel, 8 clay, 1. Gives me 1444. If you remember how to do that. And then again, at 12 minus and 12 plus, the value of sigma v in both cases is the same. 
we can get our pore pressure, U, by looking at the water table. So I'm here, down below the water table. I'm here, down below the water table. So I'm going to have 4 times 62.4, 4 times 62.4, and this will be 12 times 62.4. So remember, we're in, we are in um, English units, so the unit weight of water, density of water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Then I have my sigma v prime, which is sigma v minus u. Easy enough. So I get, I haven't done all these numbers, so I get the, that there. And then my sigma prime h is going to be, I'm in the active zone here, so I'm going to use ka. And if you remember, well, we have to use the ka for each particular soil. So I'm going to have, and it might be worth it for me to put another line here, but so what do I know? I've got um, boundary line between soils there, and I have a boundary line between soils there. So, and a boundary line between soils here. And what does that mean? That means that um, that I have, for instance, the top layer is what this is. This is going to be gravel. And this is my clay one. And this is the clay two. So we um, draw that out there. Draw that there. And then on the um, passive side, what do I have? I've got um, clay one, and this is clay two. And so what does that mean for us? It means that I'm in the gravel here, so I'm going to use my Ka for the gravel, 0.46. I'm in clay 1 here, so I'm going to use my Ka for the clay 1, which is 0.35. So that's how you decide which values of Ka to use. And then, what do I know? I know that my sigma h is sigma h prime, plus u. So I add those two columns together. And then you need to do the um, passive zone also. And I will let you fill that out. So just remember that when you're using when you're in the passive zone, well we want to use the kp values over here. So use the kp values. Okay, so what I want you to do is pause the video and uh, complete these tables. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've paused the video and you've completed the table, so let's just take a look at it here. And um, what do I do? On the sigma v side, what do I have? I've got um, the last one that we need to fill out is at 15. So for 15 I have, you know, everything at 12 plus 3 feet of clay 2. So I get my sigma v. The u for the last one is what? It's, it's 15 feet down below. So it's 15 times 62.4. For that one, it's going to be 12 times 62.4. So we can get our u's. Sigma v prime is sigma v minus u, straightforward. And then to get my sigma h prime, what do I do? Well, I'm going to 
Uh, if we remember, let's see if we can maybe I better do this one more time. Uh, we have the divisions between the soils, and we had. Um, let's get this. So, what do we have here? We've got, um, again, at the top, we've got gravel. Clay, one. Clay, two. Clay. One clay, two, and that means that um, when I get to my sigma h prime, what do I use again? I use the um, when I'm in the gravel, I use the Ka point four six. When I'm in clay 1, I use the Ka.38. When I'm in the clay 2, I use the Ka.27. So that gives me my sigma H primes. And then again, sigma H is equal to sigma H prime plus U. We sum all those and I get those columns, or those numbers in that column. And then when we come to the passive zone, now I'm looking on this side. So at depth 7, I've got 0, because there's nothing above it. And then at depth 12 minus, I simply have 5 feet of clay 1. And then that's 625. Those two are the same. You remember why that is. And then at 15, I have what? I have 5 feet of clay 1 plus... 3 feet of clay 2. So I got the 625 plus 3 times 130. So, and then now my U. What do I have? I've got 5 feet times 62.4 there. Also there. And then down at the bottom I've got 8 feet times 62.4. Gives me the 499.2. And then, what do I know? Sigma V prime is sigma V minus U. Sigma H prime is going to be with the KPs. I only have clay 1 and clay 2, so I use 4.5 times 313 to give me that number. Then I'm in the clay 2 now, so this is... 4.8 times the 313, and then 4.8 times 515.8 gives me that. So, I get my sigma H prime, then I go sigma H prime plus U gives me sigma H. That gives me all those numbers. Okay. I will stop there.